What's up guys and welcome back to Job Site Conditions right here on Deco Creek TV. My name's Jeff and on today's episode we're going to show you guys how to use stampable overlay to transform a boring gray concrete porch into a beautiful entryway that'll last for years to come and your house is going to be the talk of the neighborhood. Now this is going to be a step-by-step -step video with all the tools and equipment you're going to need so stay tuned and you're going to learn all about it. So today's project is going to rate as a 5 on our DIY meter and the product we're going to be using is Stamp Overlay from Deco Creep. Now Stamp Overlay is a highly durable product that'll completely cover up that old gray concrete and you can stamp it with pretty much any concrete stamp out there. Now this overlay is a just add water mix and it's designed to add a wide variety of colors. Now you can stamp it with powder or liquid release and if you want to get really creative it'll accept acid or water based concrete stains. The tools and equipment we're going to be needing on this job are a pressure washer, pump up sprayer, just a roller frame and a few covers, a heavy duty mixer, a pair of spike shoes, a gauge rake and a topping smoother, as well as a few steel trials and an edger. Now we're also going to need some Surebond 100 to prime the surface and a bag of Easy Patch just in case we need to do any repairs. So for today's project we're going to be using marsh gray color and soapstone powder release. Don't worry, these tools and products are all linked right down in the description below. So with all that out of the way, let's head out to the job site and get started. So now that we're out here at the job site, um, you can see we're at this beautiful looking home here and this front porch is gonna be our project today. And honestly, the concrete here is in really good shape. I mean, there is nothing wrong with it at all. Uh, the homeowner just, you know, they want some stamp concrete out here. And this is a pretty common thing, you know, on, you know, newer homes, uh, they get poured and the, the porch, the garage, the basement, they all get poured together with just normal concrete and then, you know, five, six years down the road, uh, they wish they'd done decorative concrete. And that is the beauty of Stample Overlay is now we can make this entire thing look like it was stamped from the beginning. If you guys do have some repairs, some spalls you need to fill up, uh, uh, Easy Patch from DecoCrete is a great product to handle those situations. And then if you do have cracks, uh, Quick Fix is, is the best way to handle those. Um, with that being said, I mean, I think we're going to go ahead and just get started with our prep work here today and we're going to get straight to it. So for the prep part of this job, honestly, this concrete, uh, you know, it's been poured for quite a few years. There, there isn't any sealer on here. If there is, it's just a very, very small amount. We can see the water is, you know, soaking in really good to it. So all we really need to do here is just a good, thorough pressure wash. And uh, for proper technique when it comes to pressure washing, please check out this video right here. And that's all we have to do to this. You know, most of the time, man, I, uh, front porches are just a great use for stampable overlays, uh, but the downside is that there's always some kind of posts like this, and that's what makes it tough. Why you know it's hard to uh, tear out and replace these porches, so overlays make a lot of sense. But we're gonna have to go around these things, and what I always like to do, even before I start washing, is I'm just gonna grab this cap and I'm just gonna pull it up a little bit because what this is gonna do is, is now I can go all the way up and, and get against this post when we do our overlay. And that means I have this much forgiveness there and then these caps will just come right back down. But I like to do this before I even start washing because um, you know if I went through and thoroughly washed everything, pulled them caps up, now I gotta go back to cleaning that area off. So I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna do all that and then I'm gonna get straight to pressure washing. So we got our washing all done. Everything's clean, good to go. Now, you know, to finish up a little bit of the prep work here, uh, we do wanna go ahead and hang some plastic here just to protect this siding. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is just a little bit of a tip here is if for this bottom edge, you know, if I run my, my uh, blue tape all the way down, uh, it's just really hard to get out from behind the overlay. And, and it's just like, if you leave it there, you can always see it. So a little trick is that I'm just gonna go ahead and measure up a 3 8 of an inch, cause that's how thick we're gonna put this stuff on and then I'm gonna make a little mark with a pencil. I'm gonna actually chalk that with a chalk line. Then I can run my blue tape right to that line. I know I'm exactly on, and it just gives me something to go to when I'm trialing that edge in there. Well, it looks like we're getting ready to start mixing here, and this is when all the action is gonna start. You know, uh, it's really, really important that uh, before we ever start mixing any of this stuff that we, uh, we have everything ready to go. Uh, we got all our tools ready. Once we start, uh, we're not gonna be able to stop and we're gonna be stamping here pretty soon. So what I'm gonna do, and, and there, there is a little bit of a range here from three to three and a half quarts of water uh, per bag on this overlay. And you know, it's a little bit warmer out here, the, the sun's on us. And so we wanna go ahead and, and take it all the way to the high end of that. We're gonna go with three and a half quarts. So we've also got a mason mixer on the job today. And this is pretty important on a job this size. It's about 500 square feet. 
And just trying to make, you know, uh, two bags at a time in a little tub is just really gonna slow you down. And uh, that's when you really start getting behind and, and you can get in trouble on this stuff. So four at a time, um, and, and so I got all my water measured out, you know, three and a half quarts per bag. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put in some of this marsh gray color. And this is just pretty easy. One of these little mini yard pack bags per bag of stamped overlay. So we gotta worry about, um, it's already pre-measured for us. Now, what I am gonna do is I'm gonna mix all that in the water first. I uh, got the water all measured out. I'm gonna drop my color in there and, and mix all that up just so it disperses properly. We don't want any of that color kind of getting hung up in a little chunk of overlay and, and it's not gonna come out right. The other thing I did is I saved a little bit of water out of my total. So when I dump this bucket into my mixer, I'll be able to put some clean water in there and keep rinsing that out. That way there's no color left behind um, in that bucket there. So with all that being said, I think we're ready to get started. So to go over a couple tools here that we're gonna need, and the first thing is gonna be this gauge rake here, and this is really important. Without one of these gauge rakes, you are not gonna be successful putting this stuff down, just trying to trial it out with a magic trial or a steel trial, there's just no way to be consistent with that. And this is really important because not only you know, are you gonna run short of material or end up putting way too much on, but it's, it's really important with stampable overlay that this stuff has a consistent coverage because if I got a spot that's you know a quarter inch and another spot that's a half inch, they're gonna set up differently and then I'm either gonna be way too wet when I get there stamping or it's gonna actually be too hard and I'm not gonna get any texture. So gauge rake is huge. And I also love this cam style gauge rake uh, because you don't have to measure anything. I don't have, there's nothing to set here. I just need to make sure that I have the right cam threaded on. This one happens to be 3 8 of an inch and then I don't have to worry uh, about anything else. As I'm running this, it is important to you know, keep a good angle on this. If I start to get way far uh, this way or that way, it's gonna pull the material a little bit different. So we're just gonna kind of keep those cams just nice and, and square on the ground. So we're gonna be using this the whole way and this is how we're gonna be determining our, our thickness, almost like straight edging concrete. Now, a couple other uh, options we're gonna need for finishing. You know, we're gonna have a hand trowel that we can do the edges on, but you know, we're gonna need something to smooth the entire area out. And you know, different guys like different things. If, if you guys like funny trials, that absolutely works. We can put this on a bull float handle, kind of run it like a big steel trowel. Uh, my preference is one of these blade smoothers. This one lays down nice and flat and I can just walk through the material and, and just smooth it out. There's other blade smoothers available. Any of them will work. It's just kind of a preference thing for you. The other thing that you can see is that I got my spike shoes on and this is good for a couple reasons. First of all, right now, you know, we're getting ready to start priming this area and we got it all nice and clean. Everything's done. The last thing I want to do is go dragging mulch and grass and stuff up here for my shoes. So instead of taking my shoes off, I'm just going to put my uh, shoe and spikes on and now I don't have to worry about this. But we're also going to need this once we start going because like I said, we're going to have to walk through the material to trowel the edges uh, to smooth everything out. So the, these spike shoes are a must have for a job like this. The last step that we're gonna do right before we start putting the overlay down is we're gonna go ahead and put our primer on. And that's what that Sherbon 100 was for. And this is a really easy mix. All we're gonna do is we're just gonna mix it one to one with water and we're gonna put it in a sprayer and then we're just gonna uh, soak down the slab and then we're just gonna run a roller out over it just to back roll it, make sure everything is nice and even. We got a good coat, didn't miss anything. We just need to get it SSD, which is surface uh, saturated dry. And uh, you know, as soon as it gets to that point, we can go ahead and start applying our overlay right away. In fact, on a really hot day, uh, if your primer is completely dry, it's not a bad idea to maybe just mist a tiny bit of water just to give yourself a little bit more um, grab from your overlay there. The other thing to keep in mind on this gauge rake that is, is managed is so important, and, and this has happened to me a few times, and if you don't realize right away, man, it can be a big problem in the end. But as I'm running up close to my edge here, it's really, really important that I keep this uh, cam on this slab. Always, always pay attention up on the edge that I I'm, I'm make sure I'm staying on the slab. So you guys might be really wondering uh, why we got this board uh, put on here like this. I know it looks kind of funny right now, but there is there is a reason for this. And honestly, well, the first reason is, you know, as we're putting this overlay on here, and even as we're doing it on the side here, it just tends to fall down. And this board will, just, it'll fall on this board and now it won't fall down into the mulch or the, or the landscaping. And it just saves you a lot of cleanup. Cause this, again, this stuff's pretty sticky and we don't want to get it on any of the homeowner stones or underneath here. The other thing uh, that this is going to do for us is when we go to trial this vertical edge on here, it gives us a little bit of a shelf there uh, just so it'll just help me put this on better. Honestly, these edges are one of the biggest struggles um, and you, you just you got to get used to it. It just takes a, a little bit just to learn how to hold this stuff. But this board is going to help us a lot uh, for a full uh, tutorial on this. Uh, check out our technique of the week video and Jason goes through the whole thing. 
So the stamp we're using today is a rustic barnwood pattern and it has a few deeper parts in the grain. So we're putting this down a 3 8 inch thick. Now, honestly, using this stuff outside, 3 8 is pretty much the minimum that I would ever put it down. Even if the stamp is really light, anything under 3 8 is just gonna go a lot faster than we want it to. If you're inside, a lot of times you can get away with around a quarter inch for most seamless textures. A good rule to follow is you always want to apply the overlay an eighth inch thicker than the deepest part of the stamp you're using. And this might mean up to a half inch for some patterns. So what kind of release you use is really up to you. Powder release will let you get on and start stamping a little bit sooner, which is helpful on a bigger job like this or if it's a cooler time of year. Powder release also creates a nicer impression in the overlay. Just like concrete, the hard part is knowing when to start stamping. Now this is really something that comes with experience, but if you've ever stamped concrete before, it's really pretty similar. The difference is you've only got 3 8 to half inch of material to work with, and once it starts, man, it moves pretty fast. So check it often and work your way into it. Either way, this is always done between 30 to 60 minutes after putting the overlay down. Well guys, we are almost done for the day here. You see, we just got a little bit of this edge uh, left to texture out. And then uh, all we got to do is we're just going to let this go and we're going to come back tomorrow. Um, it's plenty warm out here. Sometimes you might want to wait um, even two days before you come back. And what we're going to do then is we're going to open up those saw cuts and we're going to wash everything off. If you guys had used liquid release, um, you know, it wouldn't look quite like this. You would actually see the color that you guys put in the overlay. But with powder release, wash it off. Liquid release, uh, we could end up putting some texture enhancer on it. That's pretty much it for the stamping and washing process. All we need to do now is just let this thing dry out for a day or two and apply some sealer. So D1 from DecoCrete is just the go-to option for this or any other stamp concrete project. If you guys have any questions or anything to add to this, please leave them in the comments right below. For more information on in-depth live training on decorative concrete, please go to deco-cretesupply.com and click on the training tab. If you guys found this video helpful, please let us know by hitting the like and subscribe buttons. And if you're already subscribed, don't forget about that bell icon so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos and it really helps our channel out. So from all of us here at DecoCrete TV, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.